Hey, Foo. Hey. Okay, so the reason I wanted to have this conversation with you is because in my entire network, like the few people that I feel like can teach a class on networking and how to invest in your circle and, and use your sort of like network to further your goals, you know how to leverage your access. And I love it. And I was hoping, Why? I feel like you do. I feel like you do. Sometimes I'm always like, how does Photoshop do it all? I don't know. It's, my mind is just like boggled by it. But um, yeah, so there's a, an entire chapter in my book around investing in your circle because I thought that this was such an important thing for like women to talk about, like how we sort yeah. of like spend, hopefully spend our twenties and our thirties building relationships that further like the goals that we have for ourselves that help us to um, yeah. reach our purpose, that sort of thing. So yeah. I want to hear from you. Um, what does okay. investing in your circle mean um, to you? Like in what ways do you invest in your circle? Okay, so thanks for having me. Um, so investing in your circle for me really just means being very intentional about using your time and your resources for your circle, right? So I find that many people, many people want to take, but they don't want to give, right? So you've got to be intentional with your friends to the extent that you listen to them, you know what their goals are. I mean, if you're going to have a circle of friends, the least that you guys can do is at least have an idea of each other's basic goals. You know, like, what are your plans? You know, I know maybe like you're working or like you're running a business or you're in school. I, you know, I kind of have an idea of all that. And being very deliberate about sending you resources, helping you with people, helping you with contacts, with all those things that you're doing. I mean, I have friends that are building careers. I have friends that are running businesses. I have friends that, you know, want to go back to school. And the kind of person that I am, I'm so intentional about constantly stalking my friends with any resources I think that they need. I'm absolutely ridiculous with that. Like, I will send you different, you know, links. You know, if you ask me a question about, oh, you know, I'm trying to get this information, and I know somebody that can give you that information, I will introduce you immediately. I will do an email intro. You've always been so amazing at keeping people accountable as well. Because I know that, like, if I say to you, Felicia, oh, this is one thing that I, I want to stop doing, that um, blah, 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 you're like, on it. You're like, on yeah. it. Yeah. And I love it. Because you yeah. always have that kind of friend in your um, friendship circles or your friendship circle that keeps you accountable to your goals. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also why I think that we have to be intentional because if, if you're not intentional or, or you don't even listen to your friends, you're not even going to know what their goals are. Mm. You know, like if you're just, you know, I don't know, if, if you're the kind of person that you are so used to, you know, I guess kind of always taking from your friendships or taking from people around you and you don't take the time to really listen to your friends. And when I say listen, I say, you know, sometimes listening is beyond surface. I mean, you and I have had some conversations where a surface listening gets into deeper, you know, it's really yeah. being able to draw out of your friends sometimes what they might not even know themselves mm -hmm. and then helping them out, you know, so everything from keeping them accountable to sending resources. Um, mm -hmm. It can even be like an Instagram, you know, link. It can be something from LinkedIn. The point I'm trying to make here is that you have to just be the kind of person that loves to add value to other people. And I guess that's the kind of person I am. And so I will, you know, I'll send you stuff and I'll try to keep you accountable to the best of my ability. Yeah. <laughs> And you're such a giving, giving person. Like, it's, it's hard not to support you because it's like, when I think about, in fact, in our own friendship, eh, when I think about the take and give a eh, bank, <laughs> I'm lacking. <laughs> I'm lacking, like, a lot. And it's something that I think about all the time because, so if you ask me to do anything, like, I want to do it, like, immediately because I'm thinking, hmm, Felicia, the way that she shows up for me all the time, like, I can't even... <laughs> Why are you hyping me like this? But it's fact. Oh, I'm it's fact. Like it's <laughs> fact. There's so much that I want to learn from you. And and it's interesting because a friend of mine and I were having a conversation the other day and we were talking about, like, how, you know, you support people. And they were like, oh, yeah, mm. you know, it's one thing to say or um, invest in your circle, invest in your circle, but what if I don't have anything, you know, to invest in, um, in? Or what if I don't have the resources to invest in my friends, right? And I was yeah. sort of explaining that in every friendship circle, 
everybody has different things that they bring to the table. Everybody has different things that they're good at, different skill sets. So when they say invest in your circle, it's not necessarily about, oh, I have capital to invest in your business or, you know, I can help to, I know someone to further your career. Like sometimes it's not things like that. Sometimes it's something as simple as using your Instagram platform to talk yeah. about your friends' p- products and services. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's about celebrating their accomplishments, right? And yep. encouraging um, all their efforts. So it's not always, you know, about money. It's not always about knowing big people. It's using what you have to sort of support um, the goals and your friends, the goals that your friends have and the purpose yeah. that your friends, you know, have. I feel I like it really, is really important. But what would you say the pain points are when it comes to women <laughs> investing in their circles? Because again, it's one of those things that it might sound fantastic in theory, but in practice is, is harder you know, for a lot of people. So what, what sort of, um, things would you say like are pain points for African women in particular? So, you know, I think that there's a few things. I think one of them is just like historical baggage. I think there's a narrative about women that many women just believe without even giving other women a chance. So there's this narrative that goes around about how women don't support each other, women are catsy and all this stuff. And a lot of women I've noticed, a lot of young girls, they hear those things and they just jump on it and they don't even want to give women a chance. I think there's also a lot of undercover jealousy. And the reason I call it undercover is that I think that you need to be self-aware enough to know when your feelings towards your friends might be crossing like a thin line, right? Like, so... If somebody maybe has a really great season and is doing really well, so like Arrested wrote a book a few years ago, she, you know, doing excellently well, her book booms, you know. Another friend might be thinking, ah, I've always wanted to write a book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? I read the book, is that even all that? You know, it's yeah. like, but when you start thinking like that, I think that you need to catch yourself. It happens to people all the time. It happens to all of us. Catch yourself. On a cover of jealousy never, ever pays you. Then pettiness. You know, I read a quote that I absolutely love. It said, you cannot be a person of purpose if you are filled with pettiness. You can't. It's not possible. Pettiness is a problem. Girl, you better stop rolling those eyes. You know, I feel like women can be so petty sometimes. Uh, the things that people say offended them. I read some people are still offended from secondary school and they graduated 30 years ago. They are primary school teacher. Meanwhile, you are mother of a teenager. Like... Do you know that I have to be honest and say something? So on the two things that you've spoken about, jealousy is one um, unfortunate thing that I'm thankful that God did not give me because I actually don't understand it. Like, I feel like people need to learn to stay in their lane and understand that there are seasons to life. Like if you're jealous of someone's winning season, you don't know what they have had to lose, what they've had to have no clue in their losing season. Like even sometimes like your winning season can even be mixed with. As an adult, let's be honest, your winning season is probably mixed with all kinds of seasons in one. You've seen me, (laughs) like you've seen me at the height of like, winning but at the yeah at the you know sorry in the night or behind closed doors you, you know what happened say, oh my goodness i don't know how i'm going to deal with this and yeah and all of that so you never know like you never know what is going on and so just celebrate people when they're winning and mourn with people when they're losing be supportive you know of them what if you if you're excited when someone is in pain or going through stuff you need a therapist. You need help. That's one thing. But the pettiness <laughs> is something that um hi Queen Petty. Hi. <laughs> I am petty. Father Lord, make your daughter repent of pettiness. I am learning repent of pettiness. I'm telling you, I'm learning to not be as petty as um I used to be. But ah, gosh, sometimes you're work in progress. I'm a work in progress because really and truly when you offend me, uh there's some sort of offenses. I don't even care whether I was in secondary school. It's a show me the type of person you are. So, so you know, I said there's a difference between I know the kind of person that you are, right? Mm-hmm. And so I know the kind of things that I bring your way, or I know how close I'm going to get to you or not. And you literally going around holding people in your soul. Yes. Do you understand what I mean? Like, you just have so many. <laughs> it's very heavy. heavy. 
this stuff is actually heavy. And, and then what it does also is that when you see that person, even in like a good environment, or if that person is even trying to become a better person, you're not even interested in even hearing it. Yeah. You don't want to hear it. Yeah, you don't want to know like it. Past. Yeah. You just kind of, you know, put the person in a permanent box or whatever. And then I feel also like what happens with pettiness is that if you don't curb it, you can be petty towards anybody. I know people who are older. I understand. I'm not shading you, but you will repent of this pettiness. I know people who are much older and the fact that they were never able to let things go even affects their relationship with their children and their grandchildren. Uh, yeah. Do you get because that because it becomes like a way of life. So yeah. I think pettiness is a huge part of what a lot of um African women also <laughs> have to kind of yes. Yeah. So so I think I think for me, when it comes to my friendships, uh, I love my friends unconditionally. So I don't care whether you are you become a prostitute or an armed robber, my friend is my friend, right? Like oh, I and, you. you know, I love my friends unconditionally. So I'm that pettiness is not, you know, I don't allow it to shine through like in those relationships that I say, okay, these are my, you know, my core friends. It's probably with random people. something. Yeah, but it's it's definitely something that I own and I have to work and I have to work on being of not being a petina anymore. Um yeah. <laughs> Bye Petina. Bye, Bye Petina. Petina. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's definitely one of those things that women um deal with. But the thing is, investing in your circle is crucial because you need people to be able to tell your story. You need people to be able to support you um in times of of um, need, you need people to be able to sort of leverage on when you're looking for access to capital, or when you're looking for access to yeah. um, to work networks. You yeah, know, that thing. And for me, I I feel like it is one of the biggest lessons that someone needs to learn when they're like in their twenties or even in their teens, because building relationships. Um, quality relationships, valuable relationships is what is going to sort of propel you forward. I would tell yeah. you, both of us are examples of, um, you know, investing in our circles in terms of um, Wimbiz. Yeah. Being part of Wimbiz, um, helping to plan um, things, being on committees, meeting other amazing yeah. women who are doing other people, fantastic. amazing women, yep. you know, working towards a common goal. And I can't tell you how it, amazing like building those relationships from my 20s you know have been so it's not like we, we you meet a woman at Wimbis and then tomorrow she's changing your life it's no. more you know you've meet you've met English, you've met these you know supportive <laughs> group of women and over the years I can count so many different like opportunities or blessings that I've yeah. gotten just because I've served with certain women so when I yeah when I have a problem when I need a solution or I need a door to be open like I found you know those women to be very valuable to me in terms of like opening those doors solving those problems so yeah investing yeah. in Oh, invest in your, in your circle. So, do you have any? And you know what? I, yeah, I just wanted to quickly say that you know, because you had made a point earlier about a friend of yours that felt like investing in your circle meant you know, like money. Yeah. I will say that the most instrumental, like investment, I think that any of my friends or people in my circle, whether older, or younger, have made in me, have had nothing to do with money. Mm. you know like you know like raw cash like i could convert it into an amount yeah it is literally just people being there for you being an encourager being a cheerleader people knowing what your needs are in that season and intentionally sending the resources your way whether it's an article whether it's an opportunity it's a job you know opening your way intentionally like so i have an example of a few years ago when i was i I got a very speedy bump career-wise where I went from a position to a really high position really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was just like, oh my God, I just, I just had a baby. I was not in the headspace for it. And one of my very best friends started sending me all kinds of articles. She sent me a link to a course, Wimboard course, yeah. which I was like, okay, what's Wimboard? At that point in time, I wasn't even a member of Wimbiz. It was Wimboard, um, Wimbiz in partnership with IE Business School. And she was like, oh, you should totally sign up for this. And I was like, eh. And then I read it, women on boards. I'd never ever been on a board before. I didn't even know, you know, like the whole intricacies of all that lifestyle. And so I went and I took the course and the course absolutely changed my life. And it was literally this friend of mine sending me, then we're still using black, 
Blackberry Messenger, <laughs> sending me a picture, you know, from a newspaper of a Blackberry Messenger thing and saying, I think that this will really suit you. So, you know, it's not, it's not always about money and your friend wrote a book, so you have to buy 100 copies. No, tell your friends to buy copies, you know, do giveaways. If you can only buy five, that's fine. Buy the five and do giveaways. The point is, spread your friend's story, you know, help your friend out, you know. Don't always just think about it as, oh, I need to actually use my money or whatever. You can use your time, you can use your networks, you can use your platform. Like you said, there's so many ways that we can invest in ourselves. Honestly, like as in being your friend's PR, that's one thing that I love, like being able to be in a room that my friend is not in and sell yes. their tickets for them. And yes. They say, oh, have you heard about Photoshop? Shh. Yes. That babe is doing the most in life. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly. She's on the board of this. She's on the board of that. Yeah. She's killing it. Like you yeah. want to be able to do that. My goal, right, like in life is for all my friends to be doing amazing, like to be legends. I watched um, Honestly. this movie the other day, One Night in Miami. And it was okay. basically a fictionalized version of a night that Sam Cook. Um, mm. Muhammad Ali and a few other people like came together like in Miami and um, and they were I think Muhammad Ali had a fight and they must have like had a conversation in a hotel room they just fictionalized it there and I was just thinking imagine being a black person at that time and being like successful in boxing Malcolm X, a leader of the civil rights movement, Sam Cooke, yeah. this amazing singer that was yep. that white people loved his music and blah blah blah. They were all winning in their different in their different lanes. They, yeah. they were not in the same industry, but they were all winning and they were all standout, you know, characters in their different fields. And I was just like, oh my god, this is the dream. The dream for me is to be in a friendship circle that when you look at all of us, we're all winning, like in our in different our different ways. ways. We're all yep. it's in our different fields, and we're all finding ways to support each other. One another, like, yeah. Like when you know, people are always talking about, you know, oh, I want to meet Mrs. Awoshika, or I want to meet um, Tafela Durotoye. Me, I want, and that is lovely, right? But I want to make sure that the people, the women around me are the next Mrs. Awoshikas. Mm -hmm. Like, I really, like, I really crave that. And I, I, I feel like if women did more in their, you know, immediate circles to sort of lift each other up and be that person, like, for their friends, yeah. to encourage their friends to be that person, to find ways, small ways, big ways to support their friends to be to be that person to reach their ultimate um, place, like in their purpose, is amazing. It's just yep. amazing. so. I hope we all get there, and I hope that this I hope so. Out, you know, sort of does um, what it's supposed to do in sparking ideas or getting women riled up to sort of support each other. Thank you so much, Polusha. This was awesome, and I hope people learn from it. Yeah, my my internet had to just be like crazy there.